and welcome to Atomic Face Bomb. It's Chris, and this time around, it's all the essential items you need to play Warhammer 40,000. All right, before you can play Warhammer 40,000, you'll need a decent amount of supporting gear. Uh, it can seem intimidating at first, but when you know what to get, it's really pretty straightforward. Uh, so to ease your possible gaming paralysis, here's a medium-sized list of the essential items. And just to clarify here, all the stuff that's covered is simply the minimum. There are a lot of other things I could add to this to make the video like an hour longer, but I wanna keep this manageable for everybody. It's always better to start small, build a foundation, put everything on top of that as you start getting more into the hobby. Plus, that makes it more affordable, you're not going broke in the process, it gives you time to space your projects out, to slowly grow your army, your terrain, and everything else that you're gonna start collecting. First thing is you need an army, or a faction, as they're called in Warhammer 40,000, with models. Technically, that's not entirely required. If you wanted to, you could use cutout cardboard, you could proxy and he-men models, but it's not nearly as fun. If you're new to the hobby, just um, kinda go to the Games Workshop website, or if you know somebody that has an army, check out what they play. See what kind of resonates with you. There is no right or wrong way to play Warhammer. If you see something that appeals to your senses, go with it, have fun with it. When I first got into it myself, uh, 12 years ago or so, I borrowed someone's Tyranid army and said, this is really pretty cool. It reminds me of Starship Troopers. And it became one of my favorite factions. You're going to need a rule book and a faction codex. And those are two, two separate things. You can download the basic rules for free. It's on the Games Workshop website. It comes as like a two or three page PDF, but they are like the bare necessities. You're gonna wanna pony up. It is around $70 to get the main rule book, which I know is pretty steep, but it's an investment. You're gonna have this rule book probably for a few more years. The full rule book really elaborates on all the sort of like minute details you're going to wanna know about. So if you're really on a budget, yeah, just download the free rules, start there, but at some point you will want the rule book. Make absolutely sure that when you decide what armor you're gonna start with, get the codex. Um, if you have a local game store, go there to get it, or ask them to order it. Or again, go to the Games Workshop website, or if you can find them online somewhere, that's fine too. But you have to have them. FAQs and erratas, these, I would argue, aren't really required for newcomers. They're worth mentioning though. In order to get there, you have to go to the Games Workshop community website, and then you have to actually click on a little FAQ and downloads tab. Uh, from that menu, you can then locate your faction or the rule book and download the PDFs from there, and then keep them on your phone or a tablet, or go old school and print them. Dice, ah, dice. Everybody loves dice. Everybody hates dice. Everybody loves to hate dice. Collect them. Get your favorite ones. Dice are the lifeblood of Warhammer. They are the core of what make up this game. And you're just gonna wanna make a fortress out of dice. Luckily, uh, Warhammer, for the most part, uses just D6s. So if you wanted to, you could just empty out your old Yahtzee box. You go into your Scrabble box. Wait, Scrabble doesn't use dice. Any game that uses dice, just go empty out those boxes. Or again, you could kind of go nuts and go to chessx.com. They have like a billion different kinds. And to your heart's desire, to your budget's content, buy lots of dice. Personally, I suggest having 24 individual dice at a minimum. You would have 12 in one color and then 12 in another color. The reason for that is a speed up rolling a Warhammer. It's a good idea to just separate like different guns or different weapons. Let's say you have a unit, most of them have one weapon you have a sergeant or you have just a different character in there that rolls with different weapons. That way you can roll your dice at once and you're like, okay, the orange dice belong to this weapon and this guy, the other dice belong to this one. Just is easier that way. For tracking wounds, you can use 10-sided dice or 12-sided dice or heck, even 20-sided dice if you want. Tracking wounds does become pretty important. So if you don't use dice, you wanna figure out another system. Uh, but if you end up using dice, I don't recommend using D6s because there's something in your mind that if you see a D6 on a table, you're just gonna pick up and roll that sucker or pick it up and just play with it. It's human nature. Most of us have favorite sets of dice. 
in case you haven't already figured that out by my exuberant sort of enthusiasm with this whole topic. Pro tip though, don't mess with your opponent's dice. It's kind of a unwritten rule and a courtesy. We're very superstitious in this hobby, whether we admit it or not. When other people start messing with your dice, it's just kind of uncomfortable. If you need to roll somebody else's dice, just ask them. And sometimes we'll say it's okay, and sometimes we'll say, eh, maybe not. Just respect that. Again, dice are kind of like this sort of sacred area in Warhammer. Don't mess with the dice, man. A tape measure. Yeah, you're going to need a tape measure. You don't need to worry too much about all the units on it. Everything in Warhammer is inches. However, again, not optional. I guess you could use like a measuring stick or, I don't know, something else. They do sell these tiny little rage finders that come with like the box sets, but make your life easier. Go grab a tape measure. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Small tape measures are kind of better because they're lighter. When you have those big like industrial tape measures, I personally have dropped those in the table and that's bad news all the way around. Usually the most you're going to need to measure in Warhammer is 36 inches. Occasionally more than that if you're playing like an apocalypse game or I don't know, you have a really, really good weapon. But 36 inches typically is where you're going to hit. And a playing surface. All right, most people just use a dining room table or a fold-out table. Just make sure it's going to support a 44 by 30 inch area. Rectangle? Octagon? Area. Or better yet, the more commonly used 44 by 60 playing area. And that's 44 by 60 inches, to clarify. Playing on the floor is doable. Um, when I was a kid, there was a game called Battle Masters. Some of you may remember this game. It came out in the late 90s, mid 90s. And it had this huge mat. And this was before wargaming was common. And we would just put it on the floor. And you know, when you're a kid, that's fine. But when you're in your 30s and 40s, every part of your body is going to ache. It's just going to be uncomfortable. You're going to want a table to play on. For the long term, I recommend buying a game mat. Now, again, this is somewhat steep on the price end, but it's going to last you a while if you take care of it. I, most game mats run about $70 for the 44 by 60 versions. The smaller ones are cheaper, but again, I, if you're going to spend money on a game mat, spend money on one that's going to be larger and support your game as it grows and grows. You can always like section off a bigger mat, much harder to expand one that's already made. Some popular brands include Frontline Gaming, GameMat.eu, Table War, and to clarify, I'm not sponsored by any of these. They're just the ones that come up the most. If you wanted to sponsor me, hey, reach out. If you have a dedicated gaming table, you can stack multiple mats on top of each other, just like one on top of the other to a degree. I mean, if you get like 30 of them, it's going to be a little ridiculous, but then you can just swap them out when needed. Terrain. Unless you want to do battle on a flat surface of some remote moon, you're going to want terrain. I would even argue you're going to need terrain. Games Workshop makes some really nice terrain sets, and they're surprisingly affordable. Okay, putting the script here seemed like a really good idea at first. They even make some faction-specific terrain pieces, uh, such as orc stuff. They make Necron terrain. I think they have most of the factions covered at this point. If you really want to theme your tabletop, after your army. If you don't have anything at the moment, I recommend buying the set of the Sector Imperialis on Games Workshop's website, or again, from a gaming store wherever you want. I would also suggest buying the Minotaurum Armor Containers. That's a really good base, and you can kind of do a lot with those and really mix it up and do some interesting things in tabletop. There are plenty of Games Workshop alternatives though, so if you don't want to go that route, uh, again, just go onto Amazon and search for gaming terrain. That will bring up a lot of results or Google the same thing. There are, again, a lot of uh, manufacturers such as GameMat.eu, and there's a lot of 3D printed terrain too. So there is so much that for me to go over all of it would be mind boggling. So just do a quick search and if something catches your eye, again, you know, there's no right or wrong answer here. You can just buy it. If you are on an exceptionally slim budget, you can also make your terrain. You could take household items, you could take old spray cans, discarded objects, cardboard, kind of cobble it together. So people make some really impressive stuff with household items. It may not look amazing, but it will get the job done and it can act as a nice interim before you move on to the really expensive stuff later on. Objective markers. Arguably, this isn't required. Consider this one a gray area. Again, heavily recommended though. Most of the games you're going to play or eventually play when you start getting more serious about the hobby are going to require objective markers, at least in this edition. 
The official tournament size of objective markers is a 44 millimeter little circle, and you're gonna want six of them. Now, that's for tournaments and competitive play. When you're starting out, you can use anything as objectives, as long as your opponent agrees to it too. If you Google Warhammer 40,000 objective markers, you'll see a vast array of options that manufacturers have created. Hobby tools. All Warhammer 40,000 models come unpainted and unassembled. Because of that, you want to start out by purchasing some of the following. Plastic cutters. These are for removing models from their plastic sprues neatly without leaving any sort of damage. A hobby knife. You'll want the hobby knife for fine tuning the models after you cut them out of the plastic sprues, maybe the areas you couldn't get all the way to with the plastic cutters. A mold lime remover. Uh, someone argued this isn't required. I argue to the contrary. If you're not familiar with how plastic models are created, it's injection plastic molding. And because of that, if you look at your models on the sides or maybe sort of near the top, there might be a little faint line that goes along that's kind of ugly. And you will see that after you paint your models and it's kind of distracting. To get rid of that, you take the little, uh, you can use a file here too, by the way. It doesn't have to be the specific tool that Games Workshop sells. Any file is probably gonna do the trick. You just kind of slowly file away that line. Super glue. This is for sticking your models together. Games Workshop does sell some push to fit models, but they don't really work that great in my opinion. They're okay. But I would recommend always using super glue. You can use plastic glue if you want. That stuff is a little more toxic and it's kind of harder to work with. I would say start with super glue first until you're comfortable. You will also want a lamp or two with adjustable arms. Again, this is not really optional. If you want to do any sort of painting whatsoever, you will need a good light. Again, I recommend to one at a minimum. Don't worry too much about bulbs at this point. You could use an LED, you could use um, an old fashioned incandescent bulb. You just want something that's gonna put light over the model you're painting. If you don't use a light in paint and then use them, you'll be shocked at how much you missed. Paints and brushes. Again, pretty necessary if you're gonna paint your own models. So. You can play Warhammer 40k without painting your models. Lots of people do this. Don't do that. Please, please don't do that. So if you're gonna paint models, first thing you need is a spray primer. That makes things much easier. You can buy them from the Army Painter or from Games Workshop. Really any acrylic spray primer will do. There are many colors for these. Start out with a black or a white. Black for a darker color scheme white for a lighter color scheme. After deciding on what main colors you want, and again, that's totally up to you, purely your opinion, uh, buy the paints from a vendor that specializes in tabletop miniatures. Don't go to like Walmart or some other really cheap place and buy any old acrylic paint you see. It will be a terrible, miserable experience. And I wanna reiterate to go with acrylic paints, not enamel paints. If you're unsure of the difference, enamel paints require a solvent or something to actually break down the paint. It's toxic, it smells bad, it makes you dizzy in the head. Go with acrylics instead, they're non-toxic, they're just much easier to work with. Another quick tip here, dropper bottles are usually better for newcomers and really anyone who's painting, in my opinion. There is a pretty heated dichotomy between people who prefer the paint pot style where you pop open the lid and the droppers where you squeeze them like onto a palette. Dropper is usually easier because if you use some of like the Games Workshop style, you have to be really good at cleaning those out. It takes a lot of care and attention, otherwise your paints will dry out very, very quickly. The brands I would recommend are the Army Painter, Citadel Paints, which is from Games Workshop, Vallejo Model Color, Formula P3. I like Games Workshop paints because if you're a dummy painter like I am, they have a nice little cheat sheet you can download. Wait, wait for it. So we're it's over here somewhere. Don't, hey, don't go anywhere. Hey, come here. Okay, here it is. This is probably not gonna show up on camera. But you can download this handy little chart and it sort of tells you what colors go best with what and what shades to use with them. This you can just Google Citadel Paints color guide. It's mostly updated. But boy, is this thing helpful for new painters. Also, get at least one Citadel texture paint. This is for putting something on your bases. You can also use glue and sand, but that can get a little messy and it requires getting extra stuff. 
Texture paints are easy to use. You'll just need something to scoop out the texture and sort of spread it around on the base. A toothpick will work, a tiny spoon, just anything to get it out of there. A basic paint palette is also useful. Now, you don't need an official palette. I use old CDs. You can also use uh, small floor tiles as long as they're kind of glossy and don't absorb material. For paint brushes, you're gonna want three sizes to start. Get a size zero, a size one, and a size two. Or if you go the Games Workshop route, you can get, I mean, theirs are much differently labeled. They have like a medium base coat brush, a small base coat brush. They have layer brushes. So if you are new to the hobby, that can be very helpful. Just be aware, Games Workshop brushes are really good in my opinion, but they are far, far more expensive than where you can buy everywhere else. If you're okay with spending the extra money, that's great. But if you need to save some money, I would say go with brushes from the Army Painter or even just hobby store brushes are fine to start. Until you get used to painting, you're probably gonna ruin your brushes. If you're artistic and you know how to handle your brushes and clean them, awesome. I was not one of those people. So just be aware that that's okay. Start with like older brushes or you know cheaper brushes, get used to them, and eventually when you feel confident, get some nice brushes. If you're totally lost at this point, you're like, I don't know what to do now, Chris. That's uh, that is pretty, pretty confusing. That's fine. Just go to uh, the Army Painter. Just Google their website. Once you're there, look for their hobby brush starter set. That's all you need for now. You will also need something to put the water in to rinse out your brush. That, you know, putting these scripts up here really seemed like a good idea. Terrible idea. Uh, okay, just, yep. You can use an old mug or a cup to store your water in for rinsing out your brushes. Just be very careful. If you use an old mug, which a lot of people do, when you go to get your coffee or you go to get your tea, just be aware that this is going to happen. You're gonna to wanna to get yourself a, a nice pad of paper and a pen. And it sounds silly and maybe a little odd, but you will want somewhere to sort of jot down notes such as whose player turn it is, how many points you've scored from objectives, um, anything that just happens to come up during the game. I mean, you could also use a tablet. Just have something nearby that you can write on. Digitally or the old fashioned process is fine. You will also want a storage bin or a nice storage area. If you're new to tabletop gaming or sort of nerdy board gaming, you'll be shocked at how much space this hobby can take up. To keep yourself sane, buy a few plastic containers or a nice big old bookshelf or a glass storage container and keep those areas specifically for the Warhammer hobby. It will make your life so much easier. If you don't do this, I guarantee you will lose things. Things will fall down. It'll be hard to locate terrain or other models who need them. You really want some kind of a system here. Worse yet, your cat could knock them off if they're loose and out in the open. By the way, cats are like the number one nemesis to Warhammer 40,000. If you have kids, they will pick them up and use them as bowling balls. You really want these models, Nori Warhammer stuff, sort of somewhere that's sort of safe, maybe behind a door or up high, just away from anything that's gonna come and get. Hey, you know what, that reminds me. Hmm. Oh, hey, it's uh, story time with Elsimar, the friendly orc. One time, Chris, he, uh, he put all his stuff out in a mudroom to store all his Warhammer gear there. And wouldn't you know it, a bunch of squirrels came in and knocked him over. And they took a few of the models and used them as squirrel bedding. I know this because uh, they dropped a few back on the ground. And I, uh, I found them during the spring. That's fine, they're nice squirrels and I'm glad they were happy. But boy, they really did a, did a number on those, uh, those models. Probably don't want to leave them out just uh, laying around for random squirrels to get. This has been uh, story time with Alcimar, the friendly orc. And a reminder, everything that's covered here has been what I would consider the minimum. But for now, use this as a basic guide, sort of the blueprint. So everyone, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Until next time, good luck, have fun.